when these varied modes of ignorance operate simultaneously, they exacerbate environmental racism and health inequality. Recent STS writing on ignorance urges researchers to avoid fetishizing pollution and toxicity. Scholars caution that damage-centered research can exacerbate the very harms it seeks to address, focusing on toxicants without accounting for the full range of community concerns inevitably leads to false solutions. Avoiding this trap requires attending not only to molecules, but also to the deeply racialized infrastructures that produce them, as well as to the ways that communities navigate these infrastructures in all aspects of their lives. One approach, which I initially intended to adopt, is to conduct research in partnership with communities. I quickly realized, however, that a great many activists and scientists in Gautang already do this in a far more fine-grained way than I ever could. Instead, I've chosen to showcase some of their partnerships. Residual governance explores their work, placing it in a broader context and highlighting its intersections and dialogues with the vast body of art and journalism on mine residues. In examining how communities and their allies have challenged residual governance, this book resists the temptations of simplification and solutionism.